Hey everyone, my name is Devin and I'm so glad that you're here at GeForce. Now, if you've been watching us for a while, you know that we love to laugh here at GeForce. But the laugh I'm talking about is spelled different. It's spelled L-A-F. That's right, L stands for love. We wanna show love to everyone around us. A stands for accept. Now this one can be tricky sometimes, but this is how I like to explain it. God made everyone unique and special, and we want to accept everyone the way they are. Here's an example. Now, I have blonde hair and I love it, but would you still hang out with me if I had green hair? Yeah? Okay, but what if my favorite video game is Mario Kart? Really? Okay, but what if I don't like chocolate ice cream? That's right, no matter how many different likes or dislikes we all have, even if we look different or talk different, we can still respect one another and get along. Finally, F stands for forgive. No one is perfect. We all make mistakes. So it's important that we learn to forgive each other. And not just eventually, but right away. While we love to laugh here, there is something else that we love to do at GeForce, and that's memorizing God's word. That means it's time for our Bible Challenge. This month, our verse comes from John 16, 33, and it says, I told you these things so that you can have peace in me. In this world, you will have trouble, but be brave. I have defeated the world. If you can memorize this month's Bible Challenge, be sure to say it to your parents and have them record a video. Then get your parents to email that video here at kids at springschurch.com to let us know you completed your April Bible challenge. When you do that, you'll be entered to win a $25 Toys R Us gift card. Now it's time to stand up and get ready for my favorite part of the service, praise and worship. Let's do it, you guys.
my name is Joni and I'm so glad that you're here as we continue to talk about hope. Hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. It's about believing that God has a good plan for our lives, even when we can't always see it. Hope is about trusting God no matter what. Think about it. When you put a puzzle together, each individual piece might not look like much, but when you put it all together, you can see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you're really good at puzzles. I thought so! Well, let's put all of your puzzle knowledge into practice today with the Puzzle Master Quiz! We're going to ask you a series of puzzle related questions and as long as you get the answers right, you get to stay in the game. But if you don't get an answer right, you have to take a seat. It's simple enough, right? So let's try it out. Okay, which of these colors is not a part of a classic Rubik's Cube? Orange, pink, white, or green? You're going to pick your answer by holding up that number of fingers. The answer is number two, it's pink. See, no pink here. We've got red, yellow, blue, white, orange, and green. All right, next question. What is the fastest time that anyone has ever solved a Rubik's Cube? Is it option one, 3.47 hours, two, 3.47 minutes, or three, 3.47 seconds? Ooh. Hold up your fingers to choose your answer. Okay, the answer is number three, 3.47 seconds. Oh, can man. you believe that? <laughs> if you chose number three, you can stay in. But if you chose number one or two, please have a seat. Okay, next question. Most family jigsaw puzzles have either 500 or 1,000 pieces. The world's largest jigsaw puzzle has how many pieces? One, 5,500, two, 550,000, or three, 5,500,000. Hold up your fingers to choose your answer. The answer is number two, 550,000 pieces. Whoa, I bet it would take a long time to finish that puzzle. <laughs> if you guess number one or three, please sit down. And for those of you still standing, let's look at our next question. All right, we're gonna need one piece to finish this puzzle on the screen. Which piece do you think it could be? Number one, two, or three? Hold up your fingers and let me see. Okay, let's light up those pieces and see. It's number one. If you guessed number two or three, I'm sorry, but you're gonna need to sit down. Okay, now we're playing a memory game. We need to match the penguin card to another penguin card. Where do you think the penguin could be? Hmm. Card number one, two, or three. Hold up your fingers and let me see. All right, let's see where that penguin card is. Mm, it's number one, again. You, if you guys guess number two or three, please have a seat. But let's move on to our next question. The card game Solitaire is a game that you can play by yourself. Solitaire is also known by another name as well. What is that other name? One, aces out, two, patience, three, solo sort, or four, 52, pick up. Hold up your fingers to let me see what you think. Okay. Okay, the answer is number two, patience. I did not know that. <laughs> Neither did I actually. <laughs> and that was the last one. So thank you guys all for playing. Some of those questions were pretty puzzling. <laughs> I'm so glad that God sees the bigger picture in our lives. Even if in those times when we feel puzzled or confused, we don't always know what to do, we can always find our hope in God. Now it's time to watch our Bible story, so we'll see you guys in a few minutes. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 29. On the first Easter Sunday, before anyone knew to call it Easter, 
Jesus' disciples gathered together behind closed doors. Thomas paced the room, Peter and John and the others sat at the table, but no one was very hungry. I tell you, the tomb was completely empty, just like Mary told us. No, not empty. The, the linen cloths were still there. Thomas stopped pacing. I don't get it. Why would someone steal his body, but leave the cloths behind? They didn't. That's the point. You mean you believe, Mary, that she saw Jesus alive? Why would she lie to us? I don't know. Everything's upside down. None of us has slept. They could come for us at any minute. Like anyone, Thomas felt it must be a closed case. There was no point in debating. I'm with Mary. What about you, Peter? Well, there's Lazarus. He was dead and Jesus called him out alive. We all saw it. Thomas started pacing again. I can't take this. I gotta get some fresh air. Uh, be careful, okay? I'm not marching into the temple court or anything. Just taking a walk. No one spoke. They had already gone over and over again the events of the past few days and the things Mary had told them. I, I believe Mary. I, I think he's alive. But if it's true, won't he be angry? We all just deserted him and I, uh, I... Uh... Suddenly, with no sound, no movement, a man stood among them. <gasps> Jesus! May peace be with you. As the disciples stared in awe and shock, Jesus raised his hands to show them his side. Marks burned bright on his skin where the nails had been driven and where a soldier's sword had pierced him. Jesus, I... Jesus smiled at each of his friends in turn. The Father has sent me, so now I am sending you. When Jesus left as quickly as he had come, his friends stared at each other. Then John leapt to his feet, unable to contain his joy. It's true. It's really true. Thomas slipped back inside the room. What's true? We've seen the Lord. Jesus was right here in this room. He didn't need to open the door. He just showed up. Whoa. Hold on. You all saw him? Yes. Yeah, we yeah. saw him with our own eyes. You guys, it's just wishful thinking. You think all of us made this up? I just can't wrap my mind around it. Not until I see the nail marks in his hands. I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand in his side. Only then will I believe. All week, Thomas refused to waver or listen to the other disciples. Just stop. He died. It was terrible. The following Sunday, the disciples gathered again behind locked doors. This time, though, excitement rippled through the room. Did you hear? Jesus showed up on the road to Emmaus. What? Well, maybe he'll appear again this week. You guys, enough. But even as Thomas protested, suddenly, someone else stood in the room with them. <gasps> May peace be with you. Jesus smiled at Thomas and held out his hands. He knew every word that Thomas had spoken to his friends. Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas felt a deep peace and great joy surging through him. My Lord and my God. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. Thomas was eyewitness to the unbelievable. Jesus was alive. And Jesus didn't shame Thomas for his doubts or questions. Instead, Jesus lovingly answered Thomas and showed that no question is too big for Jesus. I can understand why Thomas felt the way he did. It must have been hard to believe that Jesus could have come back from the dead. And remember, this was a scary time for Thomas and the other disciples. 
They weren't sure if they were in danger because of everything that had happened to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when Thomas wasn't sure, he didn't keep his doubts and questions to himself. He said them out loud to his friends, the other disciples. Then Jesus himself showed up to give Thomas the proof he looked for. That really helps me too, because it reminds me that God is bigger than my questions. I mean, God is the creator of the universe. God knows everything and is always there to help us. There's no way that I could see or know everything that God can. And that gives me a lot of hope. I can have hope because I know that God sees the bigger picture. Remember, God is bigger than your questions. If you're not sure about something, you can always talk to God about it. Or you can read encouraging verses in the Bible. Mm -hmm. There are going to be times when we're feeling uncertain or having a hard time finding hope. There are going to be times when we just don't understand why things are happening in our lives. That's when we need to remember just how much God loves us and that God is with us no matter what. And remember that God always put people around us, like our family members and small group leaders, who we can talk to about anything going on in our lives. If you ever have questions, you can always email us here at kids at springschurch.com and we would be happy to answer any of your questions. Let's pray. Dear God, we know that we can all be like Thomas sometimes. We all find ourselves with questions or feel unsure about what's happening in our lives. Thank you for being bigger than any question we may have, and thank you for putting leaders and other people in our lives who can help us talk together about those questions. Help us have the courage to talk about our questions when there's something we don't understand. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Got to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can stand still. No, you have given me purpose. All my, all my heart is yours. All my, all my life. to serve you. serve you you have given me a job to do i want to love the world just like you yeah you have given me purpose oh my oh my heart is yours Maybe you're listening today and you're wondering who this God person we're talking about is. 
Well, if that's you, I wanna tell you that God loves you so much that he wanted to have a relationship with you. Yes, you. But you see, there was a problem. We all have sin, and sin is the unkind and wrong choices that we make. That sin separated us from our relationship with Jesus. Now, think of sin like a locked door keeping us from God. But God had a plan. He sent his only son, Jesus, here to the world to live a perfect life with no sin. Jesus loved us so much that he went to the cross and he died and came back to life to forgive us of all the sins that we'd ever do in our lives. Now think of it like Jesus being the key to unlock that locked door between us and God. When we ask him to, Jesus comes into our lives and he wipes us clean, forgives us of our sin. Our sins are forgiven and forgotten about. Jesus did this because he loves us so much. He wanted to have a relationship with us, but he won't force his way into your life. You get to make that choice. If you've never asked Jesus to be your best friend, you can do it in three easy steps. The first is A, admit that you've sinned and made mistakes. Second one is B, believe that Jesus is God's son and that his death and resurrection paid for your sins. And the third one is C, choose to live a life for Jesus. When you make the choice to start a relationship with Jesus, he goes with you everywhere because he wants to make sure that you live the best life ever. Now we're all going to pray together. And if you want to begin that relationship, all you have to do is repeat the words after me. It goes like this, dear Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I believe in you. Please forgive me. Help me grow every day and be more like you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Woohoo! That is so awesome. If you made the decision today to start a relationship with Jesus, please tell an adult in your life because that is an incredible choice you just made. And once you've told that adult, you can also ask them to email us at kids at springschurch.com or reach out to us on social media because we would love to get you a Bible if you don't already have one. Also, ask them to su subscribe to our Springs Kids YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss a lesson. I've had so much fun here with you guys. We'll see you next week.